All right, guys, so this is the last video in the chapter where we're going to go over the filter options in the library module. And up till now, you've seen this little mini filter list. Well, now I'm going to show you the true filters in the library module and show you just how powerful they are. And in the next chapter, we're going to cover kind of where it comes into play as far as the, uh, the workflow goes. But to get to your tool, to get to your filters, you can hit backspace. The other way we can get there um, is if we go up to view and then we click on show filter bar right here. Okay, same thing. All right, now I have all these different options to be able to filter my images by. By text, by the attributes, by the metadata, or nothing. And I can select multiple attributes as well by holding down the shift key. So if I want to filter by attributes and metadata, I can hold down the shift key and it'll activate multiple ones. If I just want to uh, filter by one, I just click each one individually. So let me show you the text filtering. So I'm going to turn text filtering on only. Now this will allow me to search any searchable field or I can specify a field to search to find certain file names. Now let's say I want to find um, something that has the label China in it. It doesn't really matter what, edit it, what it is. I just wanted to show anything with China. Obviously, this wasn't in China, but in the last tutorial video, when we were doing keywords, we started keywording some things with different, just whatever tags we could, just to illustrate. And now I can search, and it's going to search every field for that keyword that I type in. Okay, we can also set a different operator. So if we wanted to say contains, contains all, contains words, or doesn't contain, starts with, ends with, all these different options for filtering by text. Okay, now let's go to the next app the next filtering option which is by attribute and by attribute this is by the settings that we are setting as far as the ratings go so I can filter by flags once again we have this is kind of this exact same thing that you see down here at the top of the, t uh, the film strip um, we can also filter by ratings and we can filter by multiple so right now I'm filtering by flags only if I click ratings now I'm click I'm, I'm filtering by ratings and flags if I click color now I'm gonna be filtering by ratings colors and uh, and flags. So if I click on like say red, which I don't think there's any. Well, oh, let's see. Oh, I, I still have. You have to make sure that you unclick these whenever you want to not show them. So let's say I, I do flagged plus one star plus yellow. I don't have anything that meets that criteria. Okay, so I don't think I have anything that meets red either. Only the ones that are purple are have all three of these applied to it. All right, so now let's go to metadata. And this is one of my favorite ways to filter because it's so in, informative. Like I can go, check this out. This is what comes defaulted in your view is date, camera, lens, label. So I can filter these by the date and I can click down in each of these sub uh, like metadata items to go down into the month to the date specifically and filter by specific months or filter by specific days. Um, and then I can go to camera. I can filter by what camera I shot them with. I want to see everything I shot with a 40D, everything I shot with a 5D Mark II. I can even filter by lenses. Um, so I can see everything that was shot on a fisheye with a 5D Mark II for all dates. Or I can see everything that was shot with a 1.450 millimeter with a 5D Mark II only in 2009. I have to actually select that one more time. Because it works from left to right. So if you click back on one of these other options, it'll reset the, the ones to the right of it. So I'm going to select that again, and now it shows all in all 2009 images that were shot on a 5D Mark II with a 1.450 millimeter lens. Um, and then I can set another one, uh, another filter for, like, say, label. Now here's the cool part, is I can change all these filters. So let's say I want to filter by uh, something else. Well, I can filter by file type. Or what's even cooler, I can go down to my lens and see specifically which shots I took with what lens. I see that, okay, I took nine shots. I used my 50 millimeter more than everything else in this catalog. I can filter by focal length. And so you can add up all these different filters and you can see, okay, so I want to filter by focal length. On the right side, I want to do camera serial numbers and I can see specific camera numbers. Because if you do camera models, you might have, say, multiple 5D Mark IIs and you might have multiple 40Ds. Well, I can do specific camera serial numbers, get even more to the nitty gritty. And then over here, I can say, well, I want to see what it was shot at a certain ISO speed. So I'm going to choose 50 millimeter shots that were taken on this camera, whatever that is. Um, with this serial number and I can see now there are four different ISO speeds that were from the shots that are in this folder and I can see the one that was shot at 1600 ISO or the one at 160 ISO. So filters are extremely powerful in not only sorting and finding images that you need to but in also learning a great deal about how you shoot. Okay so if I click none it's going to turn off all the filters same thing as if I click over here and click none over here. 
So if I turn off filters over here, it'll do the same thing as clicking none on there. Now we have a few different presets that'll change the different columns that show up. So if I hit camera info, it'll choose camera information columns to show to populate this filter. These are kind of different filter, I guess, presets that you would use to uh, find information. You can customize your own presets and then you can save them as a new type of filter preset. So if I want to have a filter preset that is by uh, camera serial number and then by lens and then by ISO, I can set all those. And let me just do it right now for you guys actually so you can see. So I'll do camera serial number, serial number and then I'm going to do focal length. We'll do lens and then I'll do focal length and then I'll do ISO. And then I'm going to save this as a new preset. So we'll just do test preset. Okay, so now I can alternate between the default exposure info to my test preset, which will change it up to camera serial number, lens, focal length, and ISO speed. All right, so here are a few different things to note when you're filtering. If I switch to a different module, like say to the develop module, it's going to show, it's going to apply those filters still to the images that I have from the library module and it's going to keep those same images in develop. So I only see one image down the develop module because those filters are still being used. If I go back to library, if I want to remove those filters, I have to turn filters off or if I click anywhere, like if I click on this catalog, it's going to remove the filters. So check this out. See how it just removed all the filters? Now, how do I get it to not do that? Like, let's say I want to be able to move from one place to another without removing those uh, those filter options. Well, let's turn them back on. So I'm going to go to metadata. I have my filters again. I'm going to click this locked button. Now when I move, if I click the originals again, if I move from one place to another, I click these different folders, it keeps my same filters set up. Okay. Another thing to mention is that you can get to the filters menu easily an another way um, by hitting control L. Okay, so control L will turn filters off and then turn it back on. It'll just toggle the filters. Another cool filter shortcut is control F, which will bring up that text search right away. And the last thing I wanted to point out on the attributes menu, which I didn't show you guys yet, is this. On the very right side, you can see the kind. Basically, this is going to show you master photos, which are original shots. It'll show you virtual copies, which are copies of originals. And it'll show you videos. So you can also filter by these different types, these different kinds of files. Okay, so these are all the different filter options. Hopefully this gives you guys a good understanding of the filters uh, and how powerful they are. We're going to get into them in more detail as we go into the workflow in the next chapter.